Alright guys, in this video, I'm going to get these dwarves all ready to be engineers uh, for Oathmark in Battle Swan. Scruffy Crow! Ah! Okay, uh, so a few of you might have seen I picked these up from Ralph Partha. They are uh, Bob Ollie dwarves um, and they are listed as engineers. Uh, so far, all I've done is I've gone around and cleaned up any obvious mould lines uh, at the top of their picks here, just a few of little places. They were pretty clean models. Uh, one thing was there was a little line of flash in between their legs that I've gone and cleaned out. And then all I've done is just super glued them on these 25mm uh, square bases. I'm also going to use these uh, wooden MDF bases uh, that got left over from my Epic stuff. And I'm going to make 10 little fortification bits. And I'm mostly going to be making these out of these um, partially used nail art sticks uh, that my other half was dangerously close to throwing away. Uh, you can pick these up pretty cheap though in a number of places including like pound shops normally. Uh, so if I run out, I've got another bag somewhere. The rules for the fortifications mean that a unit of five um, can build the rules for fortifications means that uh, a unit can forgo all the rest of its actions and build a basically a fortification in front of each of its members. So if I build 10 of these, that means this unit could do that twice in a game, uh, assuming none of the guys get shot and that's what they want to do. Um, so I can't see a situation where I'm ever going to need more than that, really. So in the rules, uh, basically a single piece of fortification has to be 25mm wide uh, by about half an inch tall. See, approximately half an inch high. Um, and the width is in millimetres. Who doesn't love the uh, War Games trope of mixing? Uh, Mixing measurements. So I'm going to start this off with what I'd like to call Exhibit A. Uh, rather than using a scalpel or similar, uh, just use a regular knife. These, these have already got one side cut into them, but I'm just going to sharpen them up like real steaks would. Something a bit like that. So you've got a nice rough top on them. So once I've got one sharpened, I'm going to use my uh, cutting mat here and go for about... I suppose we want to be about as tall as they are high. So about two and a half centimetres. And I'm just going to... Break those off. Uh, so I'm now going to spend the next however long that takes uh, to make a whole bunch of these. Okay, so I've now cut around 70 of these little sticks from the uh, cuticle pushers. I did have to break into a new pack. This looks like it was from Primark. That was a pound for a pack full of these little sticks. So pretty affordable. Uh, so now I've got my bases back out and I'm just running a bead of hot glue straight across the middle of the base and just sticking them in. And I'm starting in the middle and I'm just putting them at an angle so they go over the front, but like not over the front of the base, on that kind of angle there. And I have to work quick. I'll make sure that angle is the same as on the last one I did. Notice I want these to line up, look like they're one continuous fortification. And then on the backs, I'm just building this up like it's a, a bit of earth that they've piled on there to keep these down. And then again on the front, I'm just filling in under the There we go. So it all looks a bit messy at the moment. And this is kind of what it'll look like in a few minutes when it starts to cool down. And these are sturdily in there. And that'll only get even sturdier uh, when we've got some paint and other stuff 
holding these all in. Okay, so there is my full set of 10 fences. I've not done the best job of keeping them all at the same angle. Uh, I might try and fix a couple of those. And at the moment they don't sit very side by side because of all this sort of excess glue and stuff. Uh, so I'm going to leave this now uh, for a few hours because although it's now set and it's uh, you know solid rubber again, it is going to take a little while for it to completely harden. Uh, so I'm going to wait for that and then I'll be able to shave down some of these sides um, and that'll give us a better idea of what they're going to look like next to each other. Okay, so now my barricades are neatened up a little bit and they're all sit side by side and they do look like one continuous barricade when they're down. Uh, I've also built a little tray for my things. So this is some of the old GW corners uh, and then some plastic card. I didn't have one stripped long enough to hand. I, I do somewhere but uh, not on my uh, temporary desk here. Um, so I've built this. Uh, it's not perfect uh, but it will do the trick. I'll be quicker than moving them by hand. If you haven't guessed the next bit already, you haven't watched enough of my videos. We have got my favourite Wilco filler. This dries nice and firm, um, and because it's brown, if you chip a little bit, it's not as obvious as if you use white. Um, and obviously it's pre-mixed, which is handy. Um, so I'll be using this in two places. One is going to be around the bases of the models themselves, because obviously they've got quite a big lip between the integral base. Now the integral base is something I could have removed uh, if I'd have wanted, but because these guys were a little bit on the short side, I've decided to leave it in and give them the extra height on the battlefield. So just daubing this all the way around, and then once that's all on there, I'm just sort of smoothing it around so none of it's higher than the base itself, and so we have a nice gradual sort of dip down to the edges. It doesn't have to be too neat at this point because it's going to be covered in sand and I'll have time to give it a quick file once it's dry anyway. As well as on the bases I'll be using a layer of this um, just to cover up any hot glue uh, partly because this will, partly because any sand and stuff will stick to this better and partly because it'll like, help add to the sort of texture and the filling in little gaps that I didn't get with the hot glue. There we go, something like that. Plenty of stuff for the sand to go on and it looks like that nice little mound in there that they've dug to, to settle their fortifications in. Okay, I'm out here having a good old spray session. So there's my barricades have been neatened up so the edges are all nice and tidy. So they sit together and then they've been sprayed black. Got a stray demogorgon there. Uh, and here you like the dwarves have got this sort of thin little highlight in the grey. Should bring out the details. I find that does help me with the painting a little bit. Uh, and there's some other bits and pieces. Okay, so my engineers and their fortifications are back from the uh, spray tray. They're all looking nice and tidy and neat. So these are all really deep now, so they all sit next to each other. Now, you'll notice that there's no sand texture on any of these, so normally after doing something like this, I just do a layer of PVA and then hit them with a bit of bird sand. Uh, but I'm going to base these the same way as I did. But I'm going to base these the way I did with the rest of my dwarves using the Luke APS mixture. Um, so I'm probably just going to leave those bases pretty much blank. Um, first paint we're going to use though is going to be this Rhinox hide. Now I've got this thinned down in this pot. I've actually got two pots of this on the go. So this pot's really thin, and then I've got a pot that's uh, sort of normal. Uh, and literally, yeah, the whole barricade. So the base, which is probably pretty much the only paint it's going to get and all of the logs get right in the gaps. So a nice big brush. This is going to be the same for the dwarf's bases. Uh, so their bases and the boots. Get a nice coat of this. Okay, so the barricades were completely painted in Rhinox hide. Nice chocolate brown all over. And then the just the sticks have been painted with Hydran Flesh. Uh, when I was there with the Hydran Flesh, I also painted the faces and wood on the dwarves. Uh, and once the Idran flesh starts to dry, I have dry brushed them to try and bring out some of the texture uh, with this Zandri dust. And then I have painted in all of the sort of cut parts at the top, the spiked parts. Okay, so all my barricades have now had the uh, 
There's Andrew Dustlayer, looking nice and spiky. I've then gone in with this. Oh, I've made a. I've messed up here. I've actually gone in with this Midland Flesh. What I meant to go in with was this Mouth White base. Uh, and to my eyes, actually, they're quite similar. Uh, so, yeah, what I've done anyway is here are the five that I've already done. And that, yeah, turns out that's in the uh, the flesh colour. Uh, I still think it looks all right, actually. Uh, so what I've done is I've just gone in and I've line highlighted all the shapes in the ends of the wood. Uh, it's actually quite easy to do. Easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, since I started in the flesh, I might as well finish in the flesh, I guess. So, yeah, basically I sort of load up my brush a little bit. And then I start on a nice, even, easy line like that. And I'm just drawing in the bottoms. And anywhere where I carved a line, just highlighting that up. And that's the sort of effect we're going for. Now I'm gonna use some of that, um, now I'm gonna use some of that same skin tone on the dwarves. So as I said, I've, uh, Given these guys the Idrin flesh as a base, and now I'm going to cover for I don't know 80% of that with this. Okay, so I've brushed on a very light wash of Agaric Shirt Shade onto these, and actually, for the first time, I think I've used Agaric Shirt Shade, and I'm not entirely keen on the outcome. I was kind of liking how fresh these tops looked, uh, now they look a bit dirtier, and I'm not so keen. I might even repaint them. Uh, but what it has done is it's really brought out the uh, the grain, uh, so I'm happy about that. Um, I'll have to see how they look when they've got the basing on, see if the contrast still looks nice. Uh, while I was doing washes, I used the same wash on this guy's bit of timber, but also uh, a flesh shade wash on all their faces and hands. Uh, I'm going to leave that to dry. But these are done for just the time being. Okay, so I've been tearing ahead with these dwarves without filming any of it. Um, basically, I've re-highlighted their faces uh, with the Midland Flesh. And I think that's worked quite well. I think that's pretty much their skin tone done, actually. Uh, I've then gone around all their coats in this blue. Uh, that is the McCrag blue. And... Uh, all their leather pouches and straps in XV88. So this is pretty much my standard colour scheme. So I went and picked up uh, one of my uh, Technolog Dwarves, one of my Conqueror Miniatures Dwarves, uh, just so I had a bit of a reminder, a bit of a painting guide on how I painted these guys. Just as a, as a quick reminder, yeah, these guys actually scale really well next to, to these ranges. Okay, so I'm absolutely flying through these little guys. Uh, the leader's almost done. So I've highlighted his beard up, and I've used a couple of shades of cream on his little maps. And I've drawn some little squiggles on there. Uh, I was really unsure about how to do these feathers. Uh, so I've ended up doing them black for now, which is a bit of a cop-out. Uh, but then he's got the grey hat to match everybody else. White bushy beard. I think he's pretty much done. I sort of, uh, I've given the, the rough around his coat a brown. I've given the rough around his coat a dark brown and then a lighter brown sort of overbrush. Uh, his coat will get highlighted along with the rest, which is probably going to be my last step. Same with these, any metal uh, has been painted pig iron uh, with a null oil wash. Uh, the leather has all been given a Agrax Shade wash. Now, I love these minis, they are quite nice and simple, but at the same time they've got these lovely little details like these chisels and sort of straps and everything. Um, the boots have had a mix of the Rhinox hide and the XV88, which is obviously what I used on the packs as well, so that kind of ties it together while being subtly different. As I said, this one's got, it's got a little saw, so you can really see the sort of shades of the metal there. Uh, and he's got a whole rack of little chisels and a 
a big chisel like a couple of us have. It's lovely little details. And the details are quite sort of fine and, and well defined as well, which is like I really like. These are quite nice models to paint. So we're almost there. Uh, my next step is going to be, once again, some of the biggest section, which is going to be the blue. Uh, and I'm going to mix that with a bit of... I'm actually going to mix that with a bit of stark white. So this is a uh, white scar. You need a little tiny bit of white in there to pull that colour up quite significantly. And I'm just going to follow the, uh, the folds in their clothes. Try and bring those out a little bit. I'm not trying to make anything particularly fancy here. I'm just trying to stop this being a flat blue. to give it that little bit more life. And I think I'm going to call these guys finished. So as I said, I have highlighted up their little coats. Uh, I'll give them actually a couple of highlights. So there's two shade, a couple of shades of blue in there. As you can see over here, I've got uh, the original colour. Then I've got the colour I've mostly highlighted them with. And then I've given some little touches of this sort of much lighter one. But they're all mixed from the two colours. Uh, the metal parts, which have had the wash, have then been re-highlighted. Any parts which I thought looked worn with the Quicksilver. Now the rest of the army is based with this Luke APS stuff. And I did this months ago and it is still kind of... I used this uh, fast drying basing glue. And this turns into a kind of jelly. So as you can see on this one, there's still sort of a rubberiness to it. If I really wanted, I could like rub that off. Um, and when I played a game the other week, the whole box was just covered in little bits of sand and thingy. So I'm actually gonna do some experiments. First of all, on my fortifications. Uh, using that stuff with some PVA and if that works okay then we'll we'll do it on these guys too. So once we've got a good amount of glue on there I've just buried this up in the uh, in the thing. I'll stick a few of these little bits on first and then I've sort of buried it and obviously this is still wet but I've knocked a good chunk of the uh, the excess off. I, I must admit I've not quite got that sort of varied look that the fast drying stuff does. So I'll do a few experiments like this um, and then we'll see what I think to it before we do the models themselves. So I've finished up all the basing and I think that's come out quite nicely actually. So I've done the the, the sticks, the, uh, the barricades in just PVA. So they've got it all piled up and that is nice and firm. Uh, though it has kind of made it a slightly darker colour. Uh, whereas the dwarves themselves, I stuck with the Luke APS stuff. So it's got that kind of rubbery texture a lot on it. Uh, but you do get a bit more variation. Uh, so they're a bit less durable than these. I'm still considering giving everything in the whole army uh, a cover with a bit of PVA just to stick this stuff down. Uh, but I think that's come out pretty well. Here are my dwarves. And I think they make a very nice little unit of engineers. And they're going to look great on the table smashing out their little barricades. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.